You wouldn't right. say no to that. <laughs> Listen, I'm not mad about it. And I also think that that's one of the benefits and good powers and the good magic of social media. <laughs> all right. right this is the moment, Claire, I'm going to go ahead and mute all. And I think we're ready to start with our first episode of 2021. Welcome everyone to Virtual Boozy Brunch. This episode is called New Moon. We're still calling this season two. I mean, completely arbitrary. <laughs> and it is episode 39. So everyone is muted right now. If you are co-hosted and you're a part of today's segment, you can unmute yourself at any time. And everyone here can also unmute themselves at any time with the space bar and share whatever you'd like to share, emotions, feelings, Feelings. This is a safe space and this is our family and we want everybody to be a part of everything. My name is Belinda Chang, if we've never met before, although looking around, I think I've met everyone here, which makes me really happy. And I started a virtual experience production studio in March and a lot of the illustrious members of the team, not a lot of them, all of them are here with us today and you'll hear from them all, whether in the chats or live here on screen. I also wanted to share something that I learned in another virtual experience the other day, which has really made these kinds of virtual experiences a lot more fun for me. So that is that I love to watch in the gallery view. So if you look at the top right of your screen, if you're on a laptop or computer, there's a button that says view and you have some options. You can watch in speaker view or gallery view. I love to watch in gallery so you can see everyone. And when Christina, who runs all of our graphics and slides and music for these virtual boozy brunch shows puts up a slide you can make that slide very small by using the slider and then you can see everyone in the gallery still and not have the entire screen obscured by you know my cute face and the lobsters <laughs> I think it's a nice way to watch the whole thing but of course you can watch in any way you like video on or off, chats on or off, though we really love it when you participate in the chats. And right now, Sari, my partner, is going to spotlight a few of you because the question at hand today as we get started, and hopefully you have your chat box open to answer too, is when you think about the new moon, we think about new beginnings and it's a new year, we'd love to hear from a couple people about what your resolutions are for this year and what you're starting with the new moon. So Ingrid Lenahan, we're going to ask you to unmute yourself and Hi. tell us what your thoughts are with this new moon and this new year. Well, <laughs> you had to start with me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just hope that everyone stays healthy and that, you know, all our loved ones and, and you know, friends, family, my, my young son is making fun of me over here as I speak. Oh. Um, just, you know, try to get through this. I know for me, I have older parents. My, my dad is 94, my mom's 84. And, and you know, it's really hard for me with my older children coming in through the revolving door and you know, them, you know, being exposed constantly to yeah. really like visit my parents. You know, I, I have to wear a mask, I have to distance, and it's not a pleasant experience. So I just hope that in the new year, you know, we all get our vaccines and everyone can have, you know, start socializing again. This is a great thing too that you put together. I think it's fabulous. I, I wish I had you know, partake, taken earlier, oh, um, we're so but glad I'm you're glad here. I'm here now. <laughs> so, yes. Thank you for sharing Not that. Not a whole lot of aspirations coming here. I'm just getting through day by day. <laughs> Listen, that's it. Yeah. All right, Karen Bloom, unmute yourself. Tell us your thoughts with the new moon in the new year. Okay, I just put on chat, do I dare admit to all of you that I'm trying to do dry January? <laughs> Oh except no! For, except for January twentieth, that day, that day, that that day, I'm definitely sorry. My phone just started ringing. That's okay. The um, yeah, no, I'm definitely gonna give it a try. So I was thinking yeah. it'd be great if we had a mocktail person on one time in January. You and I are on the same page. Good. I've got a Good. gal. I've got a oh. gal who sells also all these amazing sort of syrups and tonics. She's here local in Chicago and she just started a business this past year. And okay. we're going to bring her on to share some of her really fun spirit free items. So I got you, girl. Got Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> 
Henry and Ida, thoughts about the new year and any resolutions or anything you'd like to share? Um, I have a very quick one before I hand over to him. Okay. My resolution is I'm going to wear something with more color. Look, I'm starting off to a good one today. Hey, that's a good one. Look at you in color. Yeah. It's inspired by Zoom, for sure. I love it. Good. You, can, you can just share and I, and I did not coordinate it. Um, I think there's a couple of things. Number one, after January 2020, when the New York Times beams me in the, in the, during the day, it will be much more peaceful. I don't have to worry about nervous about anything. That's a, such a big change. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I think some of my friends said they want to lose 10 pounds during New Year or gain 10 pounds in New Year's. And you know what? It's January 3rd. The possibility, possibility is always there. So let's just do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those are great. Thank you so much for sharing those. And um, Ida, I particularly like yours because I think for people like you and I who used to live in darker colors and black stuff all the time, that also means shopping. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there are always some commercial announcements, but maybe this one is not so commercial. So thank you to everybody who has purchased wines from the Belinda's Brunch Boutique at WineAccess.com. In our efforts to always be intentional in our shopping, I really love supporting this group of people out of California who put together this amazing collection of wines and a wine club. And we're going to continue to add selections into this boutique and also tell you about the offerings and Claire and I will be tasting these wines with you if you want to open the bottles that you've purchased with us. We're also working on, I don't know if Ed is here, but a Wine Wednesday Hang where we go deep and deep dive into wines of these selections for those who want to put together some codified study in wine. Claire, I didn't tell you about this yet, but Grace Lee and a few others members of the brunch family told me they wanted for the new year some wine study and some real wine class. And we don't get to do a ton of that in these because we're supporting some of other business people that we really love. So that is coming soon, get ready. And then, of course, if you haven't been to our virtual experience shop on BelindaChang.com and you're looking for gifts or really great experiences, we have some really cool stuff. Mark Chi put together this collaboration with Saks Fifth Avenue in Valmont. I mean, this box that you get along with it, it's coming up in a couple of weeks, is worth over $1,000 and you get it for $500. It's kind of the ultimate luxury spa experience. Christina and I are both fans of this company called Valmont. So check that out because we have fun stuff coming up. And now without further ado, I'm going to hand over the mic to my gorgeous, fabulous documentary filmmaker, co-host, badass wine director. I mean, look at this gorgeous gal, Claire Pomparazzo. What else do we need to know for today? Belinda, first of all, Happy New Year to everyone. I wanted to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for supporting small businesses like mine. Um, so you're so good at doing that and making everyone feel welcome. And a big thank you to Francois Blanchard, the winemaker from France who joined us for a beautiful reunion uh, last year. I'm sorry, last year. Yes, it was last year, last episode. <laughs> last year. And um, my team that has helped me put together the documentary, I Am a Guardian, Molly Barris and Lucy in French, uh, Wide-Eyed Collective, Lucy and Richard. So if you have time, go back and watch. It's so fun. And a two-minute trailer you get to see of my documentary that has never been shown on social media. Um, so that's so exciting. Again, thank you so much. I'm very excited to drink the Wine Access wines today um, and the amazing talent that we have coming up. We have Chef Samantha and Ruth Ann, and I can't wait to get into some beautiful new moon action with both of them. So I've got my water simmering, Claire. We don't need ice today for cocktails, so it's a little easier, but I've got my bottles open. We're gonna get to those in just a minute. I've got some simmering water because I'm gonna poach my eggs and I've got my ripe avocados ready to go. So we always do something to drink, right? To lead off because that's the key to a great party. And I think to a great brunch, whether it's something delicious and spirit free, but Claire and I, I mean, we don't do this very often at Virtual Boozy Brunch, have a little bit of time to chat about incredible wines. So we have two from the Wine Access Wine Club, 
that we're going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the first one, the La Miraha, and then Claire is going to talk about the Whitehall Cabernet. But I wanted to share, Claire and I have been sipping on this wine for a couple minutes. We always do a run through of our run down before the show, and both of us grabbed this one. So the name of the winery is La Miraha. The name of the grape is one that you barely ever see. It's called Ruche. They make 800,000 bottles of wine from this grape, which comes from and is indigenous to Piedmont. Is there anyone in the group who's visited Piedmont before? You can use the raise your hand function here, or you can raise your hand. I see some people who have experienced the gorgeous, foggy, moody, fabulous hills. So if you've visited Piedmont or you're a big fan of Piedmontese wines, you uh, have heard the words Barbera, Dolcetto, Barolo, Barbaresco, and of course Nebbiolo. But Ruche, again, is a little bit of a mystery. So it's really cool that Wine Access is featuring this wine in the wine club this month. So if we're looking at the wine, I chose, and I think Claire chose too, to do a nice, big, generous glass to give this particular wine a little bit of room to breathe. The vintage on this particular bottling is 2019, it's young, but if we're looking at the color, it's kind of amazing, Claire. It does sort of what Nebbiolo does with a little bit of bottle age, and it's got this sort of orange hue around the outside, which is a hallmark of aged Barolo or aged Barbaresco or Nebbiolo based wines. And what's really interesting about this grape is it's only grown really in six communes slash six villages. And each village gives a really distinctive aroma and flavor to the wines made from the Ruche grape. This one is called Castagnole Monferrato. It's also a D-O-C-G. I don't know if anyone's ever gone to the wine shop or to the restaurant and demanded a denominazione d'origina controllata garantita but you know that's a fun one to get to roll off the tongue <laughs> so this was given its docg status in i think it was in the 90s so it's a relatively new appellation, if you will, designation for wine, but it's a very old grape that we think was planted in this region in medieval times and maybe even by Burgundians, which is really weird. You know, no Italian ever wants to give credit. Tell me if I'm wrong uh, to the French for anything. <laughs> but listen, it's in the history. So I don't know. I put my nose into this wine and I find what they call sort of the classic notes of florals. There's also sort of that white gravelly stone character. This is one of the regions that has a great vein of chalk when you get super wine geeky and we will as we move forward with Wine Wednesdays in 2021. Everybody loves to talk about the dirt and the soil. And you know we're talking about alluvial soils and varying amounts of chalky soils. If you've ever visited Burgundy, the Burgundian winemakers love to point out all the places where the soil is quite white because that's where you have the chalky limestone which is like the golden 24k goodness for making the most age-worthy wines they love to show that off you'll even get a couple winemakers that'll pick up the dirt and eat it has anyone ever seen that yeah Ruth Ann is nodding she's been on one of those wine trips with one of those <laughs> winemakers they love that stuff but I think this is an amazing really unique wine that is super food friendly they say a classic pairing is the annulote which is a pasta of Piedmont and things with gamey sauces which you see quite a lot in Italy you know that wild boar sugo or any of that sort of forest mushroom saucy stuff is a really natural match and you know in a place where people are obsessed with Barbera and Dolcetto and all of that I think this is a really cool wine I mean Claire this is like the ultimate wine geeks geeky. definitely yeah, yeah, especially if you're, you know, obsessed about Italian wine and from Piedmonte specifically, to have this is like very special. I remember sharing a bottle with a, a gentleman back in the day who we were both like so into Italian wine and it was a beautiful exploration. I do want to just say that I did have a taste of our truffle salumi. Um, from with this Chicago Salumi. Exactly. Chicago Salumi in the house. And I want to say it was such an amazing pairing. So 
keep it keep it local and you know truffles and 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 wine like this fabulous I love it. So we have that as sort of the first selection, which I think is if you're going to do a tasting menu and or taste a lot of wines by yourself, totally okay. That would be the first one. But Claire, you've got something that's a little richer, darker, decadent in New World. Absolutely. Whitehall Lane Cabernet Sauvignon. This is from Napa. Now I want to say, um, and I'm sure you can agree with me, Belinda, Pulling the bottle out, you say, Cabernet from Napa, okay. And you already know what this is gonna be. Like, this is going to be what you think it's going to be. But then when you see that it's 2014, this is not even, I mean, this is a, a library wine, right? Uh, their current release is 2016. So this is so special. 2014 in California is touted as just a very even ripening year. So to be able to taste this wine, and I kind of snuck a taste with my Coravin that I got from Christmas, which I love, right? So basically I get to take a little taste and see how it's going to play with certain foods that I'm having and then get to um, experience this later. So this is a fantastic Cabernet and I wanna say that it surprised me. Why? Because I thought I knew what it was gonna be, but it, not necessarily. When I tasted it, the first thing that came to uh, my mind was love. Why? Because it's juicy and it's voluptuous and it's round. And that was just even from the aroma and first sip then when I got to taste it with food, I was like, why is this so rich and lovely, but yet not too tannic? Come to find out, it's a blend of new French oak, which will give it a lot of character and baking spices like vanilla and things. I believe I've mentioned this before too, but also neutral oak. So you're, you're balancing it out. The neutral oak just adds to texture. There's no oaky aroma still left in the wine. And then and then you blend it together to create this beautiful velvety finish. So what I thought I was gonna get was just big, ripe, and it, it is big and ripe, but it's also subtle and has beautiful minerality. I wanna say one of the things that I, I did make for Christmas was a vegetarian Wellington. So Wellington, um, puff pastry with lots of butter, um, this, is an amazing wine that would pair with that. What's on the inside? You have mushrooms, you have a little, I, I put um, some kale, um, a little cream. All of these things kind of wrap themselves around this aroma of dark, I wanna say cassis notes. I get black, black fruit. Um, also, little, Claire, this is like so peppery on the finish. Are you finding yes. that too? Like super intense black pepper. Like I definitely want, you know, a pepper mm. mistake or, you know, something spicy like that to go along with this wine would be so delicious. Exactly, but like the idea of drinking Cabernet Sauvignon with um, steak, I think, I mean, yes, it would be delicious, but this has so much depth and, and range that to pair it with something different, you're right, a little spice, I get peppercorn. What I love is the acidity, right? After you take a sip, your mouth is watering. You want more. You do want a little cream. That would be amazing. But something savory, even like pad thai, something a little different, um, Indian, something with spice. It could stand up to it. A little curry cauliflower, which I made for the new year. Um, that would be amazing with this. And I That's love it. Yeah. You can pair this with things that you would not necessarily um, think would go, and it will work. Yeah, curry anything. I love it, Mark. Curry anything. So, oh, there's Rita Chamey, who's also a very famous wine diva. <laughs> I'm very impressed by this. So this is the Leonardi Estate wine, named after the owner Tom. And when he purchased this wine, uh, this winery in 1993, he didn't realize what he was uh, headed into. It's just, uh, have you ever had five Wine Spectator top 100 wines? Like, I mean, in restaurants, I don't know if that matters so much, but sitting here right now, I feel like what an honor that Wine Access has this wine from 2014 Vintage. Wow. It's something to share, like share with friends and get people to buy this box. Cause I think it's just, like I said, especially with my Corvin, many nights of pleasure. So fun. Claire, I think the other thing, you know, 
I think that my resolution, and it was a resolution last year as well, is to buy with intention. You know, yeah. I found over the last couple of years, as often as possible, as everybody here probably knows, I try to support if there's a woman owned business or a woman who makes what I'm looking for, that's who I want to buy it from. I mean, the Leonardi family, Leonardini, Leonardo, Leonardini family. Leonardo. <laughs> They're also fascinating and it's still family owned. There's two generations working on all of the projects at the winery and Tom's mother's family founded National Car Rental and then parlayed that, which everybody's heard of and maybe yeah. has patronized. They parlayed that into another great business. They had a store in San Francisco, a small wine shop, and then turned that into this wine business with the winery, like good people. And I always think that things are more delicious like the black truffle salumi and a lot of the things that we've shared together on brunch when it's from somebody who you can put a face to and yeah. whose story you know so claire so fun to drink wine with you cheers <laughs> <to> you <laughs> and cheers to everyone these are just two of the incredible selections available and like we said claire we're gonna let everyone know when we start our little wine school where we can drink these wines together and spend all of the time with them. It's going to be done. fun. <laughs> glad. Yeah, love it. All right, I think it's time. We've had it's some wine. Now I'm hungry. Well, it is virtual boozy brunch and it's my pleasure to introduce Chef Samanda Baisquez. So I know her as goddess of the Finger Lakes. Maybe you've seen her on Chopped. Um, I'm, I've been watching you, Samantha, and I know that uh, we started chatting about drinking, uh, getting a glass of wine in the new year. I couldn't wait because who knows? So I figured come to Virtual Boozy Brunch, we can make it all happen here safely. We still have to do not let your guard down, everyone. I'm talking to you, and I'm not going to cry when I'm doing it, but I'm going to say be vigilant. Vigilant, sorry. Vigilant. So we'll now, Claire, we'll be vigilant and vigilant. All right, together we can do anything, Belinda. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit about what we're gonna make. It's superfood avocado toast with kale tapenade. Looks amazing. Where should we begin, Samantha? We're gonna unmute you. There we go. Okay. There Samantha, we are we good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay. Where do we begin? So food processor, hopefully everybody has a food processor. And if you don't, this is something that can be done just by chopping everything and putting it into a bowl. I'm a big believer in like, not necessarily having to have like the best, you know, equipment possible. Like this food processor that I have it, you know, I mean, I like, nice things. I have a, a Vitamix blender, but you know, I have a very cheap food processor because you know, in kitchens, we, we go through them a lot. Oh, you already made yours. You're I, I want to watch you. <laughs> I, 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 I want to do it. I was going to say, while you were talking about wine that like, you know, those red wines, although I don't have them here in front of me, I'm drinking a, or a Finger Lakes uh, Chardonnay, but you know, they're going to go really well with what we're having as well, because we've got some uh, you know, the green olives and the spice of the olive oil and, you know, and the kale is all going to, you know, and the seeds that we put on top. So anyway, to begin, food processor, I'm going to put it right down on, I'm going to do this. So we have a second, you guys see that right there? Yeah. Um, and uh, I pre, one of the things that I like to do when I'm cooking is make sure that I have all of my ingredients pre-measured that kind of makes it, you know, easier um, for me to make the recipe. Um, <clears throat> so I have one cup of kale here that I'm going to put in the food processor. And the nice thing about the, so we're making the top and I first, sorry, I probably should have backed up and said that. And then um, what kind of kale, it really doesn't matter. Um, I mean, here in the Finger Lakes, we're very fortunate where we have a lot of farmers that have high tunnels and um, I'm still able to have access to lots of really beautiful greens, um, even though we're in January. Um, so really any kind of kale. I mean, uh, this is just a, the basic green leafy kale that you would normally see on like a buffet back in the eighties that was like underneath everything else. <laughs> so, you know, if I'm making smoothies, I'm not like, or I'm in blending something, I'm not like too particular about the, the kind of kale that I'm gonna use. I mean, my favorite is, is the dinosaur kale, the Italian, you know, really dark, really 
bubbly skinned kale, but um, because we do a lot of smoothies here at home, um, that's the kale that I like. Um, the next thing I have are green olives. Um, these ones that I picked out are Italian green olives that are pitted <clears throat> and they don't have any of the pimento in it. So I'm gonna put my green olives in the food processor and really <clears throat> all of the ingredients for the tapenade are gonna go in together. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I make a suggestion. If you buy olives that have pits in them, they tend to have a lot of flavor, right? And mm -hmm. I think how I got around doing mine was I had a cherry pitter. And I, oh, I just nice. that because I, I bought Casa Vachano olives because I love those. That's what and, I have. Yep. Yep. Little cherry pitting action. So that's a, that's a tip. I love that idea. I've never, you know, I, I've never done that. So even as a chef, like I tell people, I'm always constantly learning things. So thank you for that tip. I'm learning. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the pumpkin seeds that I have, we're very fortunate here um, at the Geneva Experiment Station, which is where I live in Geneva, New York, which is upstate New York in the Finger Lakes. Um, we have a, a processing uh, facility that's making um, seed oils from different kinds of seeds. So I have access to really beautiful organic um, New York state grown pumpkin seeds. You know, my, my thing about cooking, if you didn't read about me before you joined us today, is that I've always focused on um, buying local and the relationship to local producers. So even if it isn't necessarily grown locally, but it's produced locally, I like to use that as well. So um, I have these just raw, this is just a raw unsalted. Um, if you didn't have raw pumpkin seeds and you wanted to use salted pumpkin seeds, you would just adjust the salt that goes into the top and out. So that's gonna go in there. Um, I have olive oil here. I'm using an Italian olive oil. Very nice. Pepitas. There you go. Um, we also have some really beautiful local hemp seed oil that's um, produced here in the Finger Lakes. And that would be a nice addition in here, but I have a nice pure olive oil that's going in there. Um, a little bit of lemon juice. So I just pre-squeeze this with, um, you know, a juicer that you would use for like making cocktails. Um, if you don't have a juicer and then just squeeze it into a bowl so you can take the seeds out because you don't want those seeds to end up in the tapenade that would make it sort of bitter. So I'm gonna add my lemon juice in, um, adding my salt, which is pre-measured. Um, I We also have beautiful salt that's produced here in the Finger Lakes. We're very lucky. There's a, a new company, actually a new company within the last six months called the Syracuse Salt Company. And he's actually taking lake water and um, making his own salt from the um, lake water uh, near Syracuse, New York. And it's like, it's flaky, like French, like the French fleur de sol. It's incredibly beautiful. You can find him on Instagram and he's doing a lot of collaborations, you know, because of COVID working with other chefs and making um, seed blends and, you know, like anything possible where his salt could end up. So he's a really great guy to check out. I'm fortunate to have some of that. Um, yeah, I think it's really neat that you're doing all this really local stuff and communicating about it. I mean, a lot of times when people think about New York, when you're not in New York and you're in the Midwest or the West Coast, you think about like New York City. You don't think about right. like there's so much agricultural area where you are in that part of New York. Very cool. I always so, like the face the Facebook meme picture that has the skyscape skyscrape pictures of New York City and then the agricultural farmland. And it's always like, this is, you know, like that's Claire's New York and this is my New York, you know, it's like two very different places. And it, um, you know, there were years ago when, when, when Hillary Clinton was our Senator for New York and I would go to Washington because she would have once a year, she would have an event called New York Farm Days and she would invite New York producers to showcase, you know, um, chefs and producers and winemakers to showcase the product, to show that New York State isn't just the city of New York, you know, as fabulous yeah. as New York City is. So, um, yeah. I did start out on a farm, though. Remember, Blue Hill Stone Barns. Right. I wasn't wearing black. I was wearing brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Blue Hill is fabulous. Absolutely. Revolutionary. Um, <laughs> so then um, I'm going to add garlic into that. And I know that Belinda said not to pre-prep my garlic. So I did it for your purposes. So this is actually an elephant garlic ball. Um, I've fallen in love with elephant garlic lately. I, you know, I've got, I use a lot of all, you know, local garlic, lots of different varieties and people be like, oh, what's your favorite variety? And, it, you know, it really just depends on what I'm doing. But I like the mildness of an elephant garlic. Um, so this clove is much bigger. Um, but it's also milder. So it would be a garlic clove if it was just like any other kind of regular hard neck garlic. Um, and then 
Uh, you know, the trick to peeling garlic, I'm sure a lot of you have learned this already, but I, you know, I have a beautiful um, carbon steel knife that I like to use. And I'm just gonna put that knife flat on top of the, the clove. We'll see if I can move my technology here. There we go. And I'm just gonna put it flat on there and with the palm of my hand, I'm gonna smash it. You know, in the beginning of the year, hopefully we don't have too many aggressions we need to get out, but this is a really fun way to work out your aggressions is smash a bunch of garlic. So we're gonna do that. And then it just so peels off anything. nice and easy. And there it is all ready to go, right? So I'm gonna throw that right into my food processor. And the last thing that we're adding is the spirulina powder. So um, spirulina, you know, we're talking about a new year, a new moon. We're talking about, you know, what are your, what are your goals for the year? Um, I'm about to launch, thank goodness we're doing this today. So I get to drink my wine and all that. But tomorrow I'm gonna do six weeks of no gluten and no dairy as a chef who's almost 50 years old, menopause and all the kind of fun things that happen to us, I really wanna check in with my hormones. So I'm kind of taking a pause on all that stuff tomorrow. But um, for today, um, you know, spirulina is one of those things that's a really good powder to add into your smoothies, this kind of tapenade that we have. It's an antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory. So um, I am somebody, spirulina is life, absolutely. Um, I'm somebody who also suffers from asthma. So, you know, wheat, gluten, dairy, those kinds of things are, um, and anything that's inflammatory, you know, it causes inflammation, like a banana, which I, you know, sadly learned about. Um, Samantha, but we're gonna put so that I always play like- um, Yes, that's a good, I actually bought that one. <laughs> yeah, I play with Instagram roulette or Instacart yep. roulette, right? You, <laughs> you order ah, kale okay. and you get spinach, you order spirulina powder and you get, you know, this. So that's right. excellent though, because that, yeah, that's got wheatgrass, kale, and I ended up with the same thing because they didn't have pure spirulina as well. And so the beauty of that is, you know, I also don't like to just buy one ingredient that has one use, you know, so um, the beauty of the super powder like that is then you add it into any green smoothie that you're going to make. And there's a bunch of them that I'm going to start having, especially like in winter when it's gray out and I, I'm, you know, I know we have people from all over the place on the, on the, on the um, chat today, but um, for those of us who live in, you know, places where it's great, like for so long, it's really nice to have something bright, which is part of why I thought about this soup, this, uh, this um, top and on. So I'm going to put my lid on now, and then we're just going to um, pulse the, uh, the, the, um, the top and on. Samantha, we were supposed to put in some olive oil too, right? Oh yeah, yep, yeah. You might have missed that step. I did. I was talking about the hemp oil and oh, the olive oil. I wasn't paying attention. Okay. <laughs> so I'm. Um, this is pretty chunky right now. Um, if you can see that right there. So I'm actually going. It depends on like, you know, how you like your tapenade. If you want it really smooth, if you, you know, want it a little bit chunky, um, I would just process it as long as long as you want it to go. Um, so I'm going to. Do this just a little bit more. I scrape down the sides with a spatula. So June, June was just um, in the chats telling us about spirulina being very big. Um, that's all I got to see. But June, what were you um, trying to tell us here? Me? June, um, spirulina. Oh, sorry. sorry, I thought that she was sharing something. She always has great insights. Spirulina was big back in the 70s. Ah, I started yeah. using it back then. That's when I started making uh, blender drinks, okay. uh, helpful blender drinks, and spirulina was was big. Then the, it kind of disappeared, and now it's back. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> it was always it's really fun, too. I, I was sharing with Claire and, and with Belinda, um, a year ago, I was um, asked to be a part of a, a dinner for a bunch of journalists that were coming to visit um, the Finger Lakes. And um, and we were doing like, you know, it was also like a superfood kind of focus and hyper local. And um, I was connected with somebody who was growing fresh spirulina. And so um, I got it like in a jar. It has like less than 24 hours for you to handle it. like it. And it was like goopy and green and just like really beautiful. But uh, I ended up making like a, 
uh, a zucchini um, like fritter, but we're using the spirulina in there and the color was incredible, of course, but um, yeah. so our tapenade is done. Thank you, June. Um, so the next, so the next parts of this um, are are really simple. And um, about how much time do I have? Just so I, I don't want to. You have all the time you need because we can't. All wait the time that I need. <laughs> so um, the so the beauty of this is that that tapenade, like um, like uh, Claire did, she made it ahead of time. So if you're having a few people over for brunch, you know it's um, it's really nice because you can make that ahead of time. Um, and the rest of the dish, the dish is really simple to put together. So I have on a little portable burner here, I'm going to move my food processor out of the way, um, or on your stovetop, but for our purposes, I have it here, um, on the table. Um, I have a little pot going with what water that I've been, that's, um, at a rolling boil currently. And to that, and I heard, I uh, forgot who it was earlier was, um, suggesting, um, the vinegar, which I have here as well. So. I Mark usually, I, I, what's that? Mark, he's like oh, a guru, gotcha. of many, guru of many things. <laughs> so um, to move on to the next steps, we really want to, we're going to have a pot of water. I'm going to poach my egg. You can fry your egg. You can scramble your egg, you know, to go on the toast, whatever you would like to, um, to do. Um, but I'm going to put about a quarter cup of vinegar in my water. It depends on how many eggs you're poaching or how many people. Um, and while I have to wait for it to come back to a boil now, and I have a piece of, um, we have a, a local bread CSA here that does um, long fermentation sourdough uh, based bread and, and we get a couple loaves and keep them in our freezer. So um, this is my um, piece of bread that I'm going to toast. Um, starting tomorrow, I have a gluten-free bread that I would be using instead. But um, because this is a relatively large piece of bread, um, I'm only going to be using one for my, for my, yeah. So when you've got something like that, is that gluten-free? No, but it's health bread. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like the sprouted grain bread. You yeah. want this, this dish really wants to have something like really rustic, um, grainy, you know, seedy, that kind of stuff. Unless you can't do that in your diet, then you'll put it on a baguette or whatever kind of bread, you know. So I'm going to throw this in the toaster to toast real quick. Um, and then we're moving on to having um, to finish the dish. So I'm waiting for my water to come back to a boil for the eggs. Um, I've kept my eggs in the refrigerator because they need to be really cold when you're going to poach them. Um, that helps the, the sort of whites come back together. So I'm going to grab good, those really quick. Good. Tip. I have a question for you while you're doing that. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about Simply Red events and how can people find out more and support you because that's what we're about. Right. So um, I, uh, so I just invested in myself. Another thing about the new year was kind of deciding that after 20 years of being a farm to table chef in the Finger Lakes, um, it was about time that I had my own personal website. So that is about to be up um, in the next hopefully 24 hours. Um, Square, Weebly and all the rest of the world is um, a funny place when you try to transfer domains. So my website is actually going to be simplyredevents.com, um, and that uh, it's beautifully done by a woman that lives in New York City. Um, and what I've pivoted to with COVID is uh, mostly being a, a private chef, um, and I travel all over for doing that to do that. So I've been to Arkansas to put on a South African dinner. I was at, in Maine in October to do a wedding. Um, I'm doing a lot of small dinners, private dinners here in the Finger Lakes for people who are visiting from New York places where they don't have to quarantine when they come. Um, uh, but mo mo mostly what I'm trying to do is curate culinary and dining experiences um, based on my connections, knowledge, and time in the Finger Lakes. So um, Claire knows, um, you know, I've spent the last 20 years in collaboration, in support of everything local from the wineries to the, you know, um, people that are raising animals, that are making cheese, eggs, dairy, all, all the rest of it. And so what I try to do when people come to the Finger Lakes is, is show them the best of that, either by taking them places or curating experiences for them. I so, can't wait to visit you. I wanna- yeah, about I, I know, and, I, and, Belinda lives, and Belinda lives in my favorite, my second favorite city, which is Chicago. And I used to live there as well. So we had to do all that when we're allowed to. Yeah, so, right? I um, love it. <laughs> So I'm just gonna crack my eggs into a small ramekin. I did hear our friend, was it Mark, that also made that suggestion. 
Um, it just makes it easier when you go to put it in the water. Um, I've got these nice brown farm eggs, but you know, use whatever egg you have or no egg if you're if you're not doing, you know, this dish is, is all vegan if you leave the eggs off. So depending on what you're trying to do. So, um, and I saw somebody said they're trying to temper their bread addiction. It works best when you're making a sourdough bread. <laughs> There's no way that you can temper it then. But so I'm gonna take these eggs and slowly put them into the water. Um, it, my water is really, really boiling. Um, so there's a lot of movement in there, but if there wasn't a lot of movement, you could take a spoon and create what's called a whirlpool in your water. Um, and that way, when you put the eggs in, um, partially because of the vinegar and partially because of the whirlpool, um, the egg and the egg whites, the egg white part of the eggs is going to come together um, and, and, you know, really like hold up really well. So we're going to let that cook to your preference. So I did um, eggs on New Year's Day with Hop and John. And of the four of us that were eating, there were two people that liked their eggs well done. <laughs> and those of, and there were two of us that liked them super runny. So, it, you know, the timing just depends on, on how you like your eggs to be done. And we just kind of keep an eye on it and then grab a slotted spoon and we'll take them out. So I just heard my toast popped. I'm gonna grab that. So I've got a nice piece, you know, toasted piece of bread like this. If you want, you could drizzle a little bit more olive oil on that. I'm a big fan of, you know, I used to, I have, and do do culinary tours to Italy. Olive oil on everything is like, you know, it makes everything um, taste better, slip through the system, all the, the rest of the, you know, really great things. And <laughs> so. moisturizer. Can I tell you my great grandmother, um, she was so adorable, but she used to make um, everything with olive oil and dough, whether it was like little pizzettas or zeppolis, she would moisturize with olive oil. And I just remember the scent of her. She was soft and, ah. soft and doughy and the olive oil had a lot to do with it. She was just a treat, so. This is gonna be um, so good with the ruche, Claire. I'm so excited. Oh yeah. Let's play so, with baby. So I split my avocado in half and then I'm just gonna take my knife and make little slices in it so that I can scoop out my avocado and fan it on top of my, of my toast. So these are super tiny little avocados, not the most beautiful avocado in the world and very sad. When I went to the grocery store today, I had a couple older avocados and then of course, every other avocado at the grocery store today was rock hard. <laughs> I'm sure oh, yeah. everybody knows my avocado plight, right? <laughs> It's a funny thing though. I found at the beginning of um, at the beginning of COVID, there actually were the most beautiful avocados I think I've ever had in my entire life for a period of time. I have no idea why. What do you have there, Claire? You're doing something fancy. It's just a very large knife. <laughs> ah, okay. You're gonna my avocado. avocado with that really? Oh, you have a beautiful avocado. So I gotta tell you, I got it yesterday and it was rock hard and I did the paper bag trick and today, Magic. Magic. I'm Those not a fan of the big knife that Claire's using though. That makes me very nervous. All right, I'm gonna <laughs> <put it> down now. <laughs> so I have a big spoon and I'm just gonna, I'm taking the big spoon and I'm scooping all the way underneath the avocado close to the skin to take my avocado out so that I can then fan it on the top of my, of my toast. Um, there's a, there is an Instagram account. I think it's Avocadoria or something. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Like they have these beautiful like fanned avocado toasts that they do all the time. Makes me super jealous. Um, I turned my eggs off because they are done. I'm gonna take some of that tapenade and put that on next. The tapenade smells so good, chef. Thank you. Yeah, I just really like the idea of like green food in January, especially and February when it's so gray outside. You know, we all eat with our eyes, of course, right? So the tapenade is on there. And the next thing that I'm going to do um, is I'm going to take a slotted spoon that I have here and I'm going to scoop right in and grab my poached eggs. So you can do one or two eggs depending. It's nice and jiggly. <laughs> I'm just draining that right off. So let's see, we'll put this down here so everybody can see. Bring this closer here. Everybody see that there? So now the final stages are to drizzle some tahini on top. I put my tahini in a squirt bottle, makes it easier to do that. Um, and we're just gonna squirt some tahini on top like that. 
And then you've got uh, pumpkin seed and chia. Ooh, you got a fork. You're going to drizzle yours with a fork. I like that. Um, so we're going to sprinkle those seeds on top. So we've got some chia and some pumpkin seed. Um, I added a little bit of flax and also some sesame just for extra texture. Oh my God, Sam, we are so on the same wavelength. I was like, oh, yes! we add some flax, shouldn't we? Yeah. So, but the thing about flax is though, so you, is your flax whole? Yeah. So you want to give it a little bit of a crush before you, you put it on because okay. you won't take, you won't take any of the nutrients in um, when the, uh, when the, um, the oh, flax seed is whole. Gotcha. So I, that's why I always buy like flax meal or, you know, um, something that's all right. And the flax goes into my smoothies as well. And then last but not least, I'm going to do some fresh ground pepper on there. Um, I'm not going to add salt because remember we have all that salt that's in the top and on, and then that's really going to be a personal preference kind of thing. So there's that avocado toast. I think it looks wow. super yummy. Wow. Yeah. Nice. I put mine on a <laughs> Molino blue corn tortilla because I seem to have a surplus of those, Karen Bloom. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, nice. Um, so I like my eggs super runny and this is going to be a really beautiful dish. So, or caviar. Somebody just said caviar. I like yep. that idea too. Um, caviar. <laughs> yes, everything bagel seasoning works as well, Mark. Um, that's kind of like, so I'm a big like make everything from scratch girl. So essentially it's kind of like your everything bagel topping but not in a jar. <laughs> that is such a great okay. dish, Sam. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So here's, to a, here's to a superfood January. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Hope, hope you all enjoy it. Love it. Okay, so that was so much fun. And you can find Chef Samantha at Food for Life too. And we'll also send her links to the website, the new and improved website after brunch today, Claire. I think it's time to move on to our third part of the show today, if we're all ready. I'm so honored and thrilled to introduce a friend of a friend of a virtual boozy brunch alumni, <laughs> Stephanie Locke from Ready to Roll Dough, who we love so much. And she really enjoyed her experience. And she said, you know what? I have this friend who would be perfect and everyone would really love. And it's a subject matter that we haven't covered in our 40 weeks at this point. So Ruth Ann, I'm so thrilled to introduce you to our virtual boozy brunch family and have oh. you a part of this family. We're going to do all kinds of things with you today. We're going to talk yeah. about a tarot session you had with Christina. We're going to talk about the moon card in tarot. We're oh. going to talk about your business, the great yep. ladies club, and we're going to offer everyone here a very special offer, which I hope everyone takes advantage of. Ruth Ann, the floor is yours. Um, I'm so happy to be here. So thank you all so much. Happy New Year. What a crazy time. What like so many things going on. Um, and uh, I think, man, I don't know. Should we start with Great Ladies Club? Do we want to start there? Yeah. So I'll share a little story on even how that name came up and then we'll kind of start to roll through. But um, my younger sister, when she was probably six or seven, started to um, decide who was like a great lady. Like, so she would kind of just walk around and be like, oh yeah, you know, like she like she had certain friends who were great ladies or like maybe I was a great lady. So finally one day we were like, my, you know, my mom and I were like, what is, what is this? I'm like, are we talking about Rosa Parks? Are we talking about, you know, Mary Cure? Like who, who, you know, she's like, yeah, that's just, you know, she's a great lady. That's the great ladies club. So from there, you know, that was kind of an homage to my, my sister who I'm very close with. And, um, you know, similar to virtual boozy brunch, this whole incarnation uh, started with lockdown. Um, it was really about um, virtual sangha, you know, sangha is kind of a fancy new agey word for community. I um, love this word, Ruthann. I want to yeah. use it too, if we and, can. And and Sangha, Sangha can mean a lot of things. Um, traditionally, it can mean, it has many times meant um, who you're kind of going through a teaching or a lesson with together. Um, so uh, when I started to kind of look at what was, you know, what we could do with this time, you know, what we could do with this space, um, you know, having worked very much in the hospitality world and in the technology world, I was like, man, 
we still have some really cool opportunities here to make sure folks feel seen, you know, feel not so isolated. Maybe, um, you know, I was thinking about you talking about, you know, like uh, the second wine we were discussing with the cab of like, you know, I thought it was going to be this way, but it's actually this way. And that's a really common experience with things like a tarot session, you know, where people are like, ooh, I have this idea of like, what's going to happen. And then there's kind of the reality of what actually takes place, you know, and that's, that's so uh, for me, you know, what I've really focused on has been intersectional healing between tarot and uh, restorative yoga. And I don't know if folks have really explored much with restorative yoga, but it's like, you just get to lay around in a bunch of beautiful blankies and pillows and just let the pose, <laughs> like let the pose support you versus you having to do anything. Uh, and then I do a unique blend between the two. And then I also get to do really, uh, like the, probably one of my favorite things to do with really amazing creative collaborations and intersectional healings with other, uh, with other folks and their medicine. Uh, so so recently, then, it's very cool because you've pivoted like, you know, yeah. you had this as a business where yeah. you were doing tarot and you were doing teaching yoga and yeah. now you found a way to connect, which is yeah. meaningful and highly engaging. So, okay. So I love all of that. And this is very much along the lines of what we're doing here, as you said. So I'm dying to hear about Christina's session with you and Christina, I hope you're also going to chime in on the tarot reading session that you guys had last week. Absolutely. And actually, I would love for Christina to kind of start because I, I also, you know, tarot is, um, it's really, it can be kind of a personal experience. So I really want to let Christina share what she wants to share. And I'll, I'll gladly kind of chime in as she, as, as, as it deems appropriate. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Well, first of all, I mean, I even put my like woo woo background virtual moon to honor you, yeah. Ruthann. Uh, but I love that you started first talking about with what the great ladies club is, because in my mind, virtual boozy brunch is kind of like a great ladies club with Claire and Belinda um, as as great ladies kind of curating this experience. So thank you for that. Um, I was new to this. So really, thank you, Belinda, for the gift of being able to do this. I've never done a tarot reading, but I was very open to it. Um, and so my experience with the tarot reading was totally unlike anything I expected. So it's exactly what you were saying. I, I found myself um, crying within about 20 minutes. So it, that's fine. <laughs> Um, but no, out of more of just, um, it really connected. And so I think something that I wanted to share is two things. One is the opportunity to connect with yourself is such an important thing to do. However you choose to do that. If it's meditation, if it's cooking, if whatever it is, but an opportunity to reflect and connect with yourself is really important. So tarot gave me that, um, that, that, that um, space to do that. And the other thing is that I think there's, um, you talked about pivoting Belinda, which I think we've all had to pivot this year. You know, Ingrid was saying how she had to pivot with just how she even visits with her parents, right? We all, professionally, a lot of us have had to pivot. And so in a way, I felt like, well, this is an invitation to, to pivot and maybe take a new lens of how we look at things or how we be open to things. Um, so that's what it really was like for me. Um, and I also like that you talked about your sister being someone you're really close with. My sister's here uh, for the virtual boozy brunch. And I am so excited that I'm going to gift this to her. So just oh. be, be aware, Ruthann, that you will have a session booked with my sister. She's a boozy friend, which will be the code. Love it. But it was really, really eye-opening. And, and in a way, I didn't expect. I think Christina and Ruthann, to both of you, I mean, I've done tarot and I think Claire's done a tarot session before in real life. And mm -hmm. I'm just amazed and not, not amazed, but like thrilled to hear that it still translates like many things, brunch, I think translates in a virtual environment. Right. Mm. It, it does. It yeah. does. It does. And I think it does if you're open to it, right? If you're open to, I don't know what this is supposed to look like. And um, and being able to connect with Ruth Ann with never having met her and then having such a valuable, you know, 
45 minutes was something I never thought would be possible virtually. So it was really, really cool. Very cool. So we have a couple minutes left. Mm -hmm. Ruthianne, we'd love for you to share a little bit about the moon card in tarot because it's mm -hmm. so in theme. But also, can we also just, I have a question about tarot cards. I mean, yep. I have a couple of friends who also love to read tarot just for fun. And yep. they have like all these different cards and they tell me about how particular decks have feelings and almost personalities and things like that. Can you tell us about this particular moon card from this particular yeah. deck? I use a Mystic Mondays deck personally. Um, the imagery really just was personally what, what drew to me. I'm actually in February, I'm actually hosting a tarot for a four week tarot class, like very low key of how to really do self <laughs> some self-reading so I'm gonna do it on the site um and yeah you know everybody's got kind of some different modalities on how they work with decks um and you know we all have intuition some of us have kind of worked with it a little more than others it's not like a you know I'm not a I don't know something that you don't already know you know that can be kind of a stereotype or a preconceived notion of a tarot experience that like you're gonna find something out that you did you know it's like no the good news you already know, we're just having a conversation about pulling that energy through. And the same thing kind of applies to the deck, the deck. It's like, I got really drawn to this deck. I don't have to have like a major cerebral reason for it. I was just like, no, this is, this is my deck. You know, the way I pull and when energy comes through, you know, you got to kind of trust me. The card. I'm just going to interrupt real yeah. quick. We do have a question from Al. Yeah. Um, can you be gifted a deck um, or do you have to buy it yourself? Oh gosh, I, there's such a, uh, that's a great question. And it's, an, I, I, I do not believe personally in this kind of like, you have to have somebody else give you things that can also happen with like mala beads for meditational purposes and things like that. And I'm like, I went out and bought my own mala. Like, let's all like, I'm, I'm a little more kind of, um, I still live here on earth, you know? And like, I'm kind of like, sometimes things can get a little like, well, you have to do it this way or you have to do it that way. And like, that's great too, if you're part of a certain lineage, but also, eh, you know, do what calls to you. I love it. Ruthann, that's how I feel about cocktail recipes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like hundred percent. It was why I was so drawn to Italian wine, so interdisciplinary. Do whatever you want. <laughs> Oh my God, it's like the best, you know, for like interdisciplinary folks. You're just like, yes, I love Italy. You know, like, like not that the other places aren't fantastic, but you're like, yay, it's my people. So, you know? Ruthann, this moon card, what yes. does the moon card mean? Uh, so one of the things, and you'll see on my website, you know, a uh, lot of lunar imagery. I am, it's very, um, we talk about this is very feminine energy. And that doesn't mean you are like a feminine identifying being. But one of my teachers talks a lot about how we're kind of living in a lot of solar sun, like masculine energy all the time. We're kind of almost expected to be in summer all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Like, let's balance this out with the moon. Like that's a really deep kind of light. It's a very, it's going a little more inward. It's a little more about like, it's, it's equally as powerful of a kind of shedding light on stuff that's going on for you. <clears throat> But it's quieter. It's more receiving, more nourishing. It's not so like, ah, you know, it's, it's a quieter sort of space that you can make. Um, you know, there's lots of different interpretations of moon being about anxiety or about fear, but also it's really very much about intuition. It's very much about kind of going and being like, man, what's really going on? <clears throat> like, let me have an honest conversation with myself about like what my values are, have my, you know, has that changed, which is okay, by the way, we get to change our minds in life. Um, we get to reimagine. We've been talking about this as pivot. And I was, I think it was like Questlove or somebody was DJing. And he kept talking a lot about like, we really all need to reimagine ourselves right now. And we always should be, we're always changing. We always have new things. So I, I think um, moon, you know, the moon card is very much about like sort of these new possibilities inside that then can really come forward. Yeah. I love that so much. So Ruthann, we're trying something a little new today. One, yeah. 
want to let everybody know, Christina just put up a very special discount code. Thank you for this incredible gift that yeah. gives everybody $25 <clears throat> off of a session with you. And there's lots of different types of sessions that people can book. But we also want to take everyone here into little private salons for just a couple minutes. One will be with Ruth Ann. One will be with um, Chef Samantha doing that little experiment with us. As I shared with my group, I hope that everybody had fun conversations, um, but we're practicing that because we have a lot of virtual galas and things coming up where we're going to be executing that for clients. But I think it's kind of a neat way to enhance the Zoom experience. Okay, so we're a little behind today, but our deepest and sincerest thanks to these gorgeous, generous, fantastic, and smart women who joined us as talent and featured guests today. Chef Samantha, wow. We learned so much from you. And Ruthann, I can't wait to join you one-on-one -on, -one on screen. You two are so fabulous. And thank you for sharing just a bit of what you know and just a bit of your magic. We're gonna hang out here for a little after the end of the official programming for Virtual Boozy Brunch and you're welcome to join us. But if you have to go, of course, we understand. I also wanna share, Claire and I have this awesome lineup for next week. So next Sunday, we have the host and talent from the most popular food podcast in America. Claire, do you want to say a word about your friend, Dan? Dan is hysterical and I know him in life, but like I am his number one fan. He knows that. And I wanted to be on his show, but it didn't work out. So I was like, why don't you come on virtual boozy brunch? Because I adore you. Let's see. He's going to make us laugh. And like I told Belinda, he may make us cry. He's a really well-known comedian personality, and we're going to have him investigating our refrigerators. Apparently, you can tell me what your refrigerator looks like, and you can find out who I am. So we're going to uh -oh. do that, Dan. I know, Rita Chevy, it's going to be fun. And then, Sari, can you tell us a bit about your friend who's going to be joining us from Sonoma? Sure, we, we, we have Shana, Shana Davis. Um, she's lived in Sonoma probably most of her life. She's a wonderful cheese maker. Um, mm. And she also has the Epicurean selection in Sonoma. Um, she does a lot to give back to the community every time, every second she can. And she's been doing that so much during this, this pandemic. But she's got lots of great techniques and recipes to make simple cheeses at home, which cheese have really thrived. We can make, like we yeah. can make cheese Yes. Okay, so people, we are learning how to make cheese and we're gonna laugh a lot. It's gonna be a super fun Sunday. And with that, Claire and I and the team from S8H and on behalf of the VVB family, that's it. That's the new moon episode. We love you all so much. We hope that you have the best, most successful, most wonderful week and that all your new intentions are fulfilled. And we're going to stop recording. Oh, by the way, we were recording you this whole time. So if you weren't supposed to be here, let you know, let us know. Christina will edit you out.